Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over the time slider in Maya, uh, creating keyframes, manipulating them, and cover the playback controls. Okay, so let's go over the time slider. The time slider is this thing that, that is uh, in the bottom of your screen. Uh, my time slider is a little bigger. I set it up by going to Preferences, Settings, time slider and setting my height to two times two times larger uh, to learn more about the the correct workspace and settings for animation um, check out the settings and workspace video so as you can see right now the frame range on on my time slider is between 1 to 24 however if i stretch it a little more you can see that i'm i'm getting more frames in my in my time slider up to 48 that's because 48 is the maximum number of frames that my scene currently have. And the number next to it is the current frame range that we're seeing right now. So this number here is the minimum number of frames that the scene has. And that number is the minimum, the lowest frame number of what we are currently seeing. So if you want to see frame uh, 12 to 35, we can either manually put in 12 here and 35 on the other end, or we can just uh, stretch this thing around. All right, so now we, we're seeing 12 to 35. We know that our, our maximum frame range is 1 to 48, and we know how to change it. Say we want to work on a 100 frame range. Now I'm seeing 100 frames. If I'm currently only animating this part, I'll just stretch my time slider a little bit. And now I can only focus on this part before I move on. Playing with this uh, control here is very, very handy when you're animating because you don't always wanna see all the keyframes that you currently have in your scene when you're animating. Sometimes you just wanna focus on very, very short um, animation or movement. A little nice trick to know uh, is if you double click that, that bar here, it will automatically go to the maximum. And if, if you double click it again, it will go back to where you, you last left it. So that's pretty, pretty handy if you want to kind of check out your entire animation for a second and then go back to, to the micro animation. Now to play back the animation, uh, we have this, these controls over here. So let's, let's look at the entire scene. Uh, if you press the play button, you, you can watch the scene. Right now we don't have any animation, but if we did, we will watch it in real time. Currently, our playback settings are set to real time, as you can see in the playback speed here. I set it to real time. I also covered it in the settings and workspace video, uh, but you can you can change it to play every frame or twice as fast, half the speed. I think it's it's usually good to work in real time. So we have the play button, and we have the stop button. We have the play backwards button, which is just playing it in reverse. Sometimes it's good to see your animation in reverse. These two controls over here are, are for switching between your keyframes. We'll get to that in a second. The controls after that are for skipping one frame at a time. And the ones at the edges are, are for going to the end of the scene or to the beginning of the scene. So that's pretty handy. Now let's start animating. Let's create a keyframe. So there's a few ways to do that. Um, I currently have auto key set up. So that means that whenever I, I make some kind of change in the rig, it automatically, uh, automatically creates a keyframe. So let's just cancel that for right now. And I have this ball here. You can download that ball from the website. It's a kind of, it's a squash and stretch ball rig. It's kind of fun to play with and it's really, it's a really good thing to use for exercises like bouncing ball exercises. It's something every animator should should kind of have experience with. So this is the the all mover for the ball. And let's say you want to move it from like here to here. Let's look at the side window. So I'm going to place the ball here. And right now I'm, I'm on frame number frame number one. And I press S. S keyframes everything. It's crew key for the term translate, rotation, scale. And now if I move a couple of frames forward, you can move the ball to the other end and press S again. 
you see I created another red line here. That means I created another keyframe. Now you can see that there's no interpolation for me right now. It, it just stays in the same place until frame 10 and it just jumps over there. That's because I have my, my keyframe settings on stepped. That's because when I, when I first start animating, I prefer to block the, mo the motion before I, I start splining it. So let's, so let's just keyframe every frame separately. Let's say it's going to be here at 1, then here on 2, here on 3, here on 4, and here on 5. Let's delete this one. To delete a keyframe, you just right click it and press delete. All right, it's not an amazing animation, but this is good for when you start, you start blocking your scene. You might want to spread it out later just to kind of get the feeling of where you want the ball to be at what time. Okay, so we have like a, we have an animation. It's not, it's not pretty or interesting, but this is how you create keyframes. So whenever you're going to create a keyframe that you're telling the software that the, you want the ball or whatever object you're using, you want that to be in a certain place, in a certain position at a certain time. And that's, that's really what animation is all about. Now, sometimes you, you won't necessarily want to keyframe all of these things. We, we didn't rotate the ball, so really there's no need for us to have a keyframe on rotation. We did a scale it too, so why everything is keyframe right now? There's no need for that. So let's delete all those keyframes. Uh, to select a bunch of keyframes at once, you hold down the shift key. And with your left mouse button, you just select all these frames. And I click delete. I'm going to delete this frame, this keyframe too. So now we don't have any keyframes, nothing is red. Uh, if you just want to keyframe something specific, like say just the translate, you can select the translation um, attributes, right click and key select it. But there's a nice shortcut. You can press Shift W to keyframe the translate, Shift E to keyframe the rotation, or Shift R for scale. Okay, W E R. I'm gonna Control Z this for a second. So now we're just gonna keyframe the, the the translation of it. So I'm gonna press Shift W, and I'm gonna turn Auto Key back on because I wanted to, to to keep creating keyframes for me without me having to press Shift W every time. All right, so I'm gonna move this guy over here, and then I'm gonna move it over here. Create some kind of amazing animation. Okay, you see that the keyframes were created for me automatically only on the translation, not in the rotation and scale because these are the keyframes that we already created. So we, for AutoKey to work, we first have to have some kind of keyframe exist and then every change we make to that attribute, it's going to AutoKey it. So don't expect to just move something for the first time and have it being keyed. You need to create the first keyframe yourself. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and play it. All right, so we have kind of a, a blocked animation and say we want, we want to tweak it a little bit. That's where these two buttons that we talked about earlier come in. This is to jump around between the keyframes. There's a shortcut for that on the keyboard. It's the two buttons on the left of the question mark. So the left one is for going back and the right one is for going forward. So it's really easy uh, to kind of like have your left hand on these two keys and then you can like kind of tweak it, go back, change it, see how it goes. No, I don't like it. I think it should be a little taller. Go back to the next one. Animators usually jump between keyframes all the time to kind of test the motion. The, the equivalent of that would be when a 2D animator is flipping his pages when he's drawing, when he wants to check out his frames. So that's what we're doing. We're flipping our drawings with these two buttons to see if we create a, a good arc, a good animation. All right, say I'm happy with, with my, my blocking, but I think it's a little slow. So instead of moving every keyframe to, a little bit to the left, you can select all of it with shift. And if you press one of these arrows, you kind of shrink all the keyframes together. So let's shrink it to the left. And then you probably want to right click and snap. Otherwise, your keys will just like would, would be in between frames and that kind of causes problems. So I usually snap it. 
and then look it's much faster now so that's that was an easier way of of moving all of the keyframes at once all right that's it for the time slider in our next lesson we're going to cover the graph editor so stay tuned don't forget to subscribe and check out our website bloopanimation.com